It is a long journey. It's a different time frame for everybody. Just, just stick with it. Stick with it. Stick with it. Stick with it. Try to learn. Try to be a sponge. Free resources out there nowadays that you can find knowledge everywhere. Stick with it. Take notes and continue to learn. What's up traders? Welcome back to another TFT interview. My name is Kenta. Today we're joined with our trader CK. He's funded with us 100K and he's been paid out over $25,000 with us. Welcome CK, how are you doing today, bro? I'm doing amazing, feeling blessed, feeling blessed. Amazing, thank you for joining us. I wanted to just start this off with just asking you, tell us about like how you got started in, in trading. Like what was your the beginning of your journey, what did it look like? I started off in 2016. I had a job at a contact center, right? And I had a friend there. He became my friend when he was there. He said, hey, you ever heard of trading? It's back when it, you know, it was a whole bunch of social media and multi-level marketing around trading. He let me just say, hey, did you, did you ever hear about this? Currently at the time when we were at this contact center, we were working, literally only answering emails and we had a lot of downtime, right? He's like, hey, go to babypips.com, you know, take a look at it and, uh, and learn about it. I said, right, immediately I seen like my eyes, I seen money signs in my eyes at first. I, I hopped right on there. I hopped right on there. We had all the free time because we only answered to emails at the time. I threw the course two times within a matter of one week. Yeah, right away I was like, let me get right to it. And then I, I started learning. We took a look at different things. He would teach me a little bit more as we go on. And we went as well too. And then um, the show that came out, Billions. So like that show came out and you know, we was working the Showtime client. So we got to actually watch the show for free. That also gave me more motivation. Like I got to learn this stuff. I got to learn this. I got to, I got to learn this. So like, it really just worked out in the timing. I would say the timing of everything for me to start to learn how to trade and get fully invested into it. In 2016. Okay. So did you start with like, when you first got like into trading, did you start with life funds? Like how did you first like get invested into it you know sometimes they say you know start with a demo account but when i when i did the demo account i didn't get excited about it i didn't really want to do it like that you know and then i also heard a few people tell me and say your emotions aren't there when you're not in with the live account and i started with um a hundred dollars i remember that very first account that i started a hundred dollars i was in profit maybe like 95 dollars at a certain point and i was like Oh, this is real. This is real. You know, I almost doubled the account already. And then uh, the next day I blew that though. <laughs> I definitely jumped on in with like real money immediately that make sure I have that emotion. But I always, it was always uh, like $50 accounts. Sometimes if I only had $20, uh, you know, I found certain brokers that even allow you just do $20. I'll do that, you know, go with the minimum lot size I could actually use and just try to learn, try to learn a little bit more. And like looking at it now, you know, I'm glad I did it that way. I, I was able to actually get the real experience for per se, you know? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. So you were adding money to these brokers, getting like maybe blowing a few counts here and there. When was the sort of a, a turning point? Did you have like a big loss that sort of made you go, man, I need to take this more serious? Or was there ever a moment like that? And like, what did that flip look like? You know what I mean? It was probably about two to three years in or so. Cause you know, it was just taking losses, taking losses, taking losses. Maybe I'll be in profit, but then I'll go turn around and blow the account after that. So it was this one time I was, I was killing it. I felt that I was killing it, man. I had put in, I think it was a hundred or two hundred dollars and I was up about $4,000 on the account. I had hopped on a flight with some positions open and I got off that flight. I was down about, well, still in open trades down about 2000. And then that's when, you know, at that point I was trading with no stop loss, no stop loss at all, letting it run. Just, you know, I, I started feeling really good about myself when it fully blew the whole $4,000 and I didn't take anything or withdraw anything out of it. That's when, all right. I got to start trading with a stop loss and start trying to protect the capital. It's there. It's there. Like I've been in profit so many different times. It's just about protect it at this point you know even though like that was pro like profit that you made from you know that 150 200 account would you say that was like your biggest loss or was there a bigger loss than that yeah that was my biggest loss on like a personal account for sure because I, I lost the whole four thousand by 
being stubborn, hard-headed, not closing out that trade after 2000 either. That was definitely the biggest one I had. I would say the second one from that man, it, it, which is another reason why I don't, I try to stay clear of news a lot too now, is when um, the election was going on in, I think it was 2020, yeah, 2020. I remember I, I was up, I was up maybe about 1700 or so. I opened up my trader app and I was down, everything was gone. Everything was gone. It, I think it was at like six o'clock PM or seven o'clock PM, like right when some of the news came out and the election started. I seen that happen. I was like, wow, I definitely got to be careful. So all of those experiences make sure that like it, what helps me and allows me to continue to keep a stop loss. I see the importance in it now. Like the stop loss is, is super, super important, super important. Are you able to share your screen and maybe show us some of your previous trades or a little bit of your strategy? I'd love to pick your brain. All right. So what I do, I use support and resistance areas. I change up the color from time to time of my charts as well, too. I like to try to keep it a little fresh from time to time. So I got my black one. I got my black um, support areas and then I got my blue ones currently right now. When I make them, the black ones, those I will actually put on the weekly time frame. Either the weekly or daily, some of the ones that are a little bit stronger. And then the, be the ones that are a little bit less stronger on the lower time frames. And those will go down all the way to about the four. Like, as you can see, when you have, whenever you go way back, it, you know, it works out quite a bit. So I don't have to actually continue to do it every single day. You know, I got it on your time frames. So it, like it works out. So like these ones right here, I put these in, I'll say maybe about a month ago. It's still respecting them and it's, I could still utilize them. What I would do, I will try to take my trades whenever I do based upon those support areas. Um, then I'll also a bit of fibs, as you can see right here. So like this was a trade that I was able to get involved in right here. You got in on the pullback after that that drop? Yep. In terms of my fibs, what I'll do is utilize those as some lower support areas as well. Sometimes we'll use fibs in terms of the 38.2. That's one of my favorites right there because... If I get into a trade, like let's say if I like this one right here, when it's right here, I still feel comfortable because it is below the 38.2. Once something breaks the 38.2, I can consider a trend being broken for the time being, get on out or a better position at that point for me. Are you entering on the four hour or what's your like entry time frames? I would take a look at the four hour to, you know, see what's going on here. Well, daily than four hours, what I try to do. I'll take a look at the weekly to see what I think is going to happen and, you know, where my bias is going to go for the entire week, because I like to think ahead for the entire week, try to hold it a little bit instead of having to get in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out. Because over time, that's why I see the most losses when I'm trying to get in and out, in and out, in and out. And it becomes somewhat like for me if I'm just in and out, you know. So I'll go on down to the four and then try to get down to the one as well. I try to usually take all of my positions off of the one. And then whenever I'm scaling on in, I'll try to find some opportunities on the 15 to just do some scaling on in based on the one hour, four hour. Yeah, I go back and forth between one hour, four hour. But I try to take a look at the 15 minute to try to get my positions I scale on in. Because that way, you know, if I'm in profit and it's starting to run, I want to maximize my profit. You know, and then I, what I do is go back to the stop loss and have the stop loss be safe there. So it's essentially double the profit with only risking the same the same amount of money you know yep right around here uh, when i got in i got in about here where do you put your stops in a position like that so what i would do in terms of that i would utilize my support and resistance area so the blue right here that's where i would put my stop above with a little bit of space a little bit of breathing room of course because you know it could go up to it go above it but not close above it um usually if it closes above it i would get on out and wait for another opportunity there and I also like to make some of these, like, as you can see this box right here, I like to make these as an area saying, okay, this is going to be my strike area. This area, when I see it hit this area, I know that something may happen. So I'm watching to see what will happen here. And that's when it went in as with this uh, wick right here. So that's when I was able to take a look at it, see it. Once I see it, it, it closed below, that's when I got on it. The one hour closed below that level and you entered the cell with your stops just above that blue zone. Yep, correct. When you started scaling in, what did that look like? I've been burnt in the past by scaling in too quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Try to allow it to go far enough to the point that I want to be sure. I want to be sure, as sure as I can be when I scale in. So like with this one, when I got here, 
my scaled in. When I scaled in, I scaled in somewhere around in here. And then what I would do is put my stop loss back up here at break even for the first position. And then the second one will be at that same point of the break even of the first position. So essentially, I only risk like this area right here, you know? This is the only area that is this much right here is what would be risked instead of it being two positions being on, still trying to take it all the way back up here as a stop loss. How much are you risking per trade, like, first of all? Yeah, so I, I try to stick to either 0.5 or 1%, depending on the trend. And I don't like to counter trend trade. Uh, I've definitely been burnt in the past counter trading on a trend trader. So I like to trade with it. Like one of the things that I, I found that works for me currently on the 100K account is just two lots, two lots, two lots, two lots. If I start to put in any higher than two lots, I start making mistakes. It starts to mess with my psychology as well too. The numbers are moving a lot faster than I'm used to or even comfortable with moving. So I try to do two lots on any position that I do put on it. So you got in on after it closed below on the one hour, you scaled in again. When did you exit? Like, cause it obviously pulled back into that area where it looks like you could have gotten stopped out. Where did you exit that trade exactly? So with this one right here, I definitely write it all the way down into here or into this wick, but I got out or somewhere around there. Cause one of the things that I found out and I, I like, I like to do to men is like, I like to say, Hey, let me add to balance, add to balance, add to balance. Because you can get stuck in a trade forever to say, hey, maybe it's going to continue to run. Maybe it's going to continue to run. I think it's really dumb to add some profit to your balance. And then we can take a look at it. Awesome. Okay, so you, you mainly trade gold. You have what looks like one indicator. Is it just to show you like the higher high is in higher low? Like what what's the indicator? that? Yeah, that's the, the only indicator I have there. It is definitely a lagged indicator, but that's the only one I have. So I, it just helps me take a look at it. Because what I used to do, I used to draw like arrows like this and have the arrows on there going up, down, up, down, up, down. So I could just see. The trend. But then I was like, that's it makes my chart messy. It's all in the way. So I, I take that off and I just have the higher low there. That way I could take a look at higher low and lower lows. That way I could just take a look at it to see, hey, what's going on with the trend? Because like I was saying, I want to trade with the trend and I don't want to counter trade it because you get burnt that way way too much. I feel like, man. <laughs> is there a specific time that you trade i used to trade at any time of the day but then what i noticed is i was showing up in the evening during like the asian session and i would put in trades and trying to work hard and it would it wouldn't even go anywhere it wouldn't move at all so now especially for gold i try to trade in the morning london open in during the new york session as well too eastern standard time i like to trade from eight to maybe noon or so that that, that time frame there because i know around eight eight thirty nine o'clock we got some pretty good news that usually comes on now i can be already positioned in a trade or be ready to take it at those times and that, what i've noticed is at noon one o'clock once that four hour candle closes it usually stops all of the volume the volume the volume leaves for the day and i also like trading at um 3 a.m 3 30 a.m when london's about to open as well too i've noticed some pretty good um volume at that time too for gold are you so you're on the east coast yep east coast Florida. yep nice man okay cool well yeah that makes sense i appreciate you showing us a little bit of breakdown of your of your strategy here right now i'm still sticking with my bias of selling for now especially saying the fact that with the weekly you know we broke past this entire wick here on the weekly here so now I think now we're back to some selling power for sure here. Keeping my eye out for some sales here. And I want to see this reject from this this uh support area here. That's what I'm trying to see. Once I see that, that's when I'll be in some more sales. See right here. What I would want to do is take this and then go back to the four hour real quick. And then probably take it down to either this support area or the negative 1.8. I like using these as a take profit here. So TP1, TP2, depending on how it's looking there. So once it gets above that 38.2, I know that, you know, we got a pretty significant pullback here and I just need to wait. I need to get on out if I'm already in there, wait for it to come back down and show that it's going to start dropping again for me. It seemed like those last trades were maybe like a one-to-one -one or something, or I don't know exactly what the RR, do you have a strict risk to award parameters? Or are you more so, like you said, kind of like, let's just add to the balance here, like as we're especially if you're stacking, like you're like, okay, let's, let's take some off the table type of thing. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. I definitely want to do the added balance and take some off the table. I don't try to go for one to ones though. That's why I, I don't really try to go for one to ones because I mean anybody have a streak of losses. So if I'm going one to one losses, I've definitely blown accounts, reached funded accounts, things like that. Doing that. So what I try to do, I try to at least go for about three to one. I try to get through at least three to one, and then if I notice that. It goes enough. If I haven't added to the position or stacked anything yet, I'll still put my stop loss at that break even. If it rejects and it it will go stop me out, it's better that it just stops me out at break even rather than starting to take a loss when I was in profit. Because you know, with my mental, it really messes up my mental if I'm in profit and then now I'm in a loss. Now you know. I know what you mean. You have to understand like yourself and like know like what triggers you or like what. Like your psychology, basically, like understand, like, okay, if I, if this happens, usually, like, I don't fare well the next day or whatever, or like, you know, kind of understanding like your own risk parameters and things like that. And, and I've had times, man, that it definitely went up, stopped me out at break even, and continue right into the direction that I trade in. And but it's a little bit of FOMO, you know, thinking FOMO with that. I'll take the FOMO over me being upset that because I'm a very I'm a very hard headed person, man, very hard headed. So like I've taken those losses by saying, no, I'm just going to keep holding it. You know, it's going to turn around, turn around. Next thing you know, I took a loss that I did not have to take. That was not necessary. So what would you say is like you being able to get to these like funded live accounts and start getting payouts? Like what did you start doing that kind of helped you get over that ill? I'll say one thing is consistency in terms of my lot sizes. That's one thing that definitely, like I was saying before, I do two lots. Before, like when I was trying to pass different challenges, I would have all different type of lot sizes, you know, depending on the trade and whatnot. Now I just stick to two. I stick to two, let that run for a little bit. And then when I see an opportunity to stack, I put that first one, stop loss at break even, and then I, I'll stack that second one on there, you know. So that way, if it does go up, we happen to, to lose the trade. That first one, not going to be impacting me in any way whatsoever. It's not going to go up past that first entry I had either, though, you know, stacking like that and then allowing it to go all the way up and breaking past the first entry and going up. That's what will really damage you, put you behind the mark as well. So being consistent with your lot sizes and just trying to stay consistent in that type of plan where your the risk is is more so like, all right, let's catch a trade. It's going on my direction. Now I can set my stop loss to break even and I can even start adding some positions in that direction and keep the risk the same. Absolutely. Absolutely. That and also holding it to actually get to my take profit, either too much profit or a few points away from it. I'll get out as well if it's like a few points from a take profit. I would rather, you know, leave that little tiny bit on the table than allow it to go all the way away from my take profit and just keeping those things for sure. Did you ever have like a mentor specifically that like you kind of found and helped teach you or what did that look like? I've never found me a mentor, man. But one thing that I have always been really big on, man, is listening to interviews, interviews of people that um, are successful, still trying to be successful. And I've been able to take over the seven years now, you know, I've been able to take different things from different people. And that's what's helped me get to where I'm at now, man. When I'm in the gym, I'm listening to some type of podcast, listening to some type of you and like seeing like people that are successful go through some of the same things that I've gone through. It gives me confidence to say, okay, I'm going to be able to make it. I'll be able to make it. Just got to stay consistent. Just got to stay consistent, stick with it. And um, those are the things that really help me grow. I would say help me grow over time. I do agree with you too. I, I watched a lot, a ton of interviews as well, where, you know, you see these people and see their different approaches and you see some of similarities between the the successes and you know, you start to like piece together like your own puzzle almost for like how to unlock your own success in a way. It is yours, you know, and figuring out like I like the way you said like with a puzzle. It is yours that you have to figure out, you know, what other people do. You know, you have to take different things from different people. That and my, my boy Jay, the one that taught me how to um trade and taught me about it. You know, me and he'll talk daily now, you know, about everything. If, you know, we had a trade in or, you know, if we like, hey, I don't know if I should get in this one right here. You know, we always we always talk about it. We always give each other motivation as well, too. Definitely glad that I still got him around, man. I think that's the next thing I was going to ask is like, do you have like a community? So it sounds like you have your, your friend Jay. What? How does that play a part in your in your system of like your day to day? Like, does that really change things for you? Do you think that's something that you recommend other people do? Like have someone to 
sort of bounce ideas off of or yeah absolutely it gets real lonely you know it gets really really lonely when you when the charts talk to people about it too so like you could have like you know a girlfriend at home or friends that you live with or friends that you hang out with if they don't actually trade they're not going to understand some of the things that you go through as a trader you know so having someone actually does it there i mean talking through things and you know like dag man today you know i I did it again. I should have. I should have took the profit, man. But look what happened. Now I'm. Now I'm down. You know. And you know, thinking we're late at that point. And um, you know, tell you like it's all. You know, you you it's okay. You know, and give you some words of encouragement. So that, that's definitely one. I would recommend everybody get in. You know. Yeah, and I, I would say you got to find someone that you can trust. You know, because it's always people that you can't trust out there. So that's why I try to keep. In terms of like community, I try to keep my circle small, just me and him bounce ideas off of each other. Cause I also don't want too many opinions either, you know, cause too many opinions, then you can start making mistakes. And I think a lot of traders probably get into the game and they're joining telegrams and discords and they're seeing all these different people talking and it's just so much going on. I think there is a required time for you to sit down and really break things down for yourself, understand your own system. And then if you do have that person or maybe you've built something with other people where you trade the same way in that way, like you're very like congruent in, you know, your strategy. So it's like if he you're asking him about a question or asking her about a question, it's like it will translate because you guys both are trying to do the same thing here. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Outside of like, you know, interviews and podcasts, like was there anything that you drew information from that's helped you? Yeah, um, uh, for the one trading in the zone, of course. <laughs> Another one was Market Wizards. Market Wizards helped out a, quite a bit. Going back to you know talking about how you know people go through hard times in their journey, Market Wizards it showed me how you know some of the best traders ever went through different hard times in their journey. We're all human, and it happens to all of us. Everybody that fails, that like that ninety, that ninety five percent of people that fail, they all quit stick through it, continue to try to grow every single day. Like you said before, it's a puzzle. It's us. We have to grow. It's no one else taking these trades for us. We just have to grow as a person. Those are the two books that I absolutely, absolutely love there. Yeah, I agree. I, I read those too. And that I think that it's a must read. I, I think also it's it's a, re, it's a read once you're a certain part of your journey. I don't think if you just read it right when you start, it will make much sense to you. But once you've had some experience of, of loss and different things that you've been, you know, analyzing, then you can kind of go back and really solidify your mental game um, with those type of books uh, for sure. Outside of trading though, you said you you go to the gym, you listen to podcasts and stuff there. Like, is there, you know, anything else that you do outside of trading that you think translates into your trading? So the, another thing that I do, I do, I do some, I do gaming as well. You can do a little bit of streaming. It allows me to do it. So like, instead of me sitting down, looking at the chart all day, like, oh, let me watch the chart, watch the chart. It allows me to take my mind off of it. Interesting. I like that. Okay. So you set, do you like enter trades, set stop loss, take profit, and then maybe put some alarms and then that type of thing, go play your games? Yep. I, I use alerts at the premium trade in view, of course. So what I do, I usually I set a alert for when the, the position is up. I'll set an alert for the stop loss and I'll an alert for it to take profit as well. I don't want to know that it's going, you know, in some loss and, you know, going back and forth in loss, but I do want to know when it's up. That way, if I need to go ahead and move up my, my stop loss to break even. So it's, it's, it's either I hit the stop loss or I'm going to like move my stop to break even at some point, but I'm not going to be messing around with the stop loss. Like I let kind of let that, unless I'm up, you know, at a certain point then I'm not moving, you know what I mean? It, does that kind of sound right? Yep, that's exactly it. If you're looking at the screen when you're in red and you might do something crazy, you might move your stop loss, you might, you know, close a position, whatever the case may be, right? So that's a good approach. I like that idea of like uh, gaming for like a distraction from like maybe bad emotional decisions or just being too glued to the screen for, for some reason, you know what I mean? Like it could be an interesting approach even for like other you know, things that you can do. Maybe you go and like you read or like you go do something else, like just distract yourself from just staring at the charts and maybe potentially making a bad decision just because you're looking at one little candle or something. Yeah. And those are, those are the times I make the worst decisions whenever I'm staring at the chart, you know, just staring at the chart while it's in, while in positions though, 
that's when for me it starts to become somewhat like gambling. I feel like I'm at like the casino. Let me see. Let me watch. Ready? Oh, I'm ready. Let me, let me go ahead. Put more money on it. Let me throw more money on it. You know. I try to like put it in. You know, set it. Forget it. Like, I'll be back to it later. You know, wherever it does go, I'm gonna have the alert. So if I don't get any alert, I don't have anything that I need to be looking at right now. You know. I only trade gold. I'm not going through multiple pairs. It's only gold that I trade. So, you know, I, I don't need to continue to come back and forth, back and forth to the actual market. That is well, picking like one pair and sticking to it. So that way you can really understand like its movement and stuff. And if you have like two, three, four, like it just starts to become a little hectic because you could essentially pass and make money just with one pair. Like people do it. Like that's, you know, they stick to it. I also think that with, some of the traders that I that do have multiple pairs, it's usually that they're like position or swing trading so that they're able to like get more opportunities because they are ready to hold something for like a week if they have to or whatever. Okay, so you use gaming for sort of like, like outside of trading, you kind of use that to like distract yourself from doing something crazy, you know, making decisions that aren't right from staring at a screen. Does that, do you think that the like going to the gym also helps you maybe in your trading, like come, getting to the charts, like that type of thing? Like, yeah, I definitely think so. I'm a gym head. So like, you know, when I've gone to the gym, I feel like my mind is a lot clearer. So I can give a lot more oxygen to my brain as well, too. Trading is a sport that's all mental. So if your brain is not doing well and you're not getting oxygen to your brain and you're going to do well at trading, you know, so that allows me to calm down, relax. I feel much better after I go to the gym every day, too. I could go hit the charts and I feel like I'm at my, my top game when I'm when I'm after, after hitting the gym per se. When it comes to like someone that's maybe struggling right now, you know, they're in a position maybe you were in before where they were trying to get it, you know, funded. Maybe they had, you know, struggles just getting a payout or whatever the case may be. They're just not getting to where they want to be. What are a few tips that you'd give to them to up their game to the next level? Utilize the free resources that are out there. Like YouTube, resource that's out there you find quite a few different interviews not only interviews but also people just going through hey look at this look at this strategy look at this way that i you know manage my losses that's another thing manage the losses don't try to just shoot for profit all the time try to manage the losses that's one thing i found man is that when you're just managing the losses and making sure that you don't take a too big of a loss the profits are going to come you look at it that way. Don't look at it trying to make the money. That's when the mistakes are usually made when you're trying to make the money. And then take it slow. Take it slow and learn. And Rome wasn't built in a freaking week, you know. If you need to lower your lot size just to make sure you can get some wins in, if that's what you need for your mindset. If you're using big lot sizes and taking those big losses, it's going to wreck you mentally. Go ahead and try to get some small wins under your belt. And then do that, you can build on top of those small wins at that point. And add to balance. Add to balance. Add to balance. Yeah, yeah, don't forget to take some profit. Like it's true. It's you should be focusing on managing your risk. That way, you have like no excuse to say, "Oh, I took this huge loss." It's like, well, if you were managing your risk, then you would have never taken that huge loss. And so, when you're managing your risk, like you said, you can once you start start pushing into profit, you can start, you know. You can start adding more, a little bit more risk because you can move your risk up. You know, you can you can set stops to break even. Now you have a little room to add a little bit more. Now your profits can you know double, triple in the right direction. Exactly. I passed perm challenges with a thirty eight percent win rate, but that goes to show like if you are managing the risk, you can take the losses, and then you just want to make sure that you have a money in the balance. You are there for that big win because the big wins come. The big wins definitely do come. But it, I think a lot of people go through is they take all of those losses, 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 big losses that they didn't seem to take advantage of that big win when it does come. Man, that's cool. So tell me, like, are there any, like, obviously, like, you have some goals coming up, like some big goals, you know, maybe near future, long term, like, what's your plans? I'm trying to continue to get funded, try to make it to half a million in funded. The way I look at it, man, if, I, if I'm able to get funded and have a lot more funding there, that will essentially lower my risk when I get the same type of profits, you know? If I have $500,000 funded, it's significantly different than having just $100,000, you know? So, like, two, the two lots that I have on here, I can have, you know, wider stops, per se, you know? That's my goal, continue to try to grow in terms of getting funded more and more. 
at the end of the year, like I said, I want to take it slow. I want to try to get to that 500. But if I can get higher than the 500, I'm definitely going to try to take a stab to get higher than the 500 as well, too. You can totally do it, bro. You've been funded on other accounts. You got your 100K. Build on it. Is there any last words you want to share with the audience before we kind of wrap this thing up? Last thing I just want to share with you guys is continue at it. They say that 95% of traders fail. All 95% that fail, quit. So don't quit. Continue to learn at it. It took me, myself, about five years, six years to even become profitable. So it takes a long time. Somebody else's story, if they took six months, that's their story. That was them. Everybody's different. And I will tell you that it is worth it. The time that you take to you know, actually get there, it's worth it by far. Dude, just guys, just like seriously, it's if you guys are in like a, um, a half a year, a year, even two years, it's like you you haven't even graduated like a college or high school yet. You know, it's like that's one thing, man. Like anybody that asks me, like, hey, can you teach me to teach me this? The first thing I always tell them is like, hey, go to babypips.com, learn right on there at first, right? But then people don't even do that. So it's like, I don't know if you're going to be able to make it if you don't even go there and go and do that to start off, you know? It is a long journey. It's a different time frame for everybody. Just, just stick with it. Stick with it. Stick with it. Stick with it. Try to learn. Try to be a sponge. Free resources out there nowadays that you can find knowledge everywhere. Stick with it. Take notes and continue to learn. 100%, bro. If they want to, if their audience wants to reach out to you, how, how can they uh, connect? You guys can reach out and hit me up on Instagram. It's uh, CK the Prince. Um, I'm on Instagram every day. I do I do respond. Yeah, hit me up, guys. I'll be more than happy to help. CK the Prince. I'm gonna add you for sure, bro. I follow back too. I follow back. Yeah, man. I appreciate you. I wish you the best on your journey. And yeah, like I think this interview has been very beneficial. I think the audience will really enjoy this one. And if you guys like this video. Hit the subscribe button. I know most of you guys aren't hitting the subscribe button. So just go ahead and just do that right now for both of us. And hit the like button. Show some love in the comments. And we'll see you in the next video. Peace. Peace.